Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, and good afternoon. We have another exciting day of the Play vs. Spring 2021 High School Championships. And today's final is going to be taken down in the state of Georgia, where we're not going to see any devils going down there anytime soon, but we might see some demons on the rift and these young high schoolers. My name is Rafa, and we got Smacks coming to bring you the action live. And Smacks. Between these two high schools, let's start talking about Northview Varsity because they actually faced their opponents in Lambert High School and they lost, so they're coming for revenge. Ooh. Yeah, they absolutely are here in the finals, Rafa Lambert. Uh, looking like the, the stronger team just based on those results alone, but as we get into this best of three series, it's going to be up to how these games play out on the Rift today that matters the most for the finals in here. Uh, this play versus collegiate or high school championship, rather. And yeah, just as you mentioned, we're down here in Georgia. I think you were talking about Princess and the Frog as well. Is that what I was getting right there? Is that, is that the reference oh. you're making? <laughs> the, with the demons and devils. So I was referencing to the Charlie Daniels band, The Devil Went Down the Georgia oh. song. I don't know. Okay. Did you ever play Guitar Hero 3, Smacks? Um, I think my Guitar Hero was the fifth one. I think that Ooh. was the one on the Wii. Uh, that was the one that I had, whichever one was on the Wii. Mm. Well, you missed out. I, I Honestly, <laughs> for me, after Guitar Hero 4, the, the series kind of waned out of uh, relevancy. But Guitar Hero 2 and Guitar Hero 3 were where it was at, especially Guitar Hero 3, because you could go into boss battle against the devil, and then you you would play The Devil Went Down the Bjorn. And that's a, that's a banger song. Um, but we, 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 um, cause princess and the frog is in Louisiana. So, oh yeah, you're right. You're right. Okay. Not, I've got not, it not quite the right Southern state there. Yeah, my bad. <laughs> I'm up but in it's the okay. hand, you know, I'm up in the mitten. So I, <laughs> I don't know my, my geography down there. I'll learn. I'll learn for this as we're, we're in Georgia. I know where that is. I promise. <laughs> and, uh, we're already into the draft already here, Rafa. Woohoo. Well, to give you a little bit of more context, so we already said that Northview Varsity are coming for revenge as they took on Lambert High School, the Longhorns, in the fall 2020 play versus finals. And Lambert High School being the defending champions, we actually found out a very interesting fact this morning. Uh, a player that I have known since 2018 through when I first got into esports uh, casting in Risen by the name of Piquetter is the coach for this squad and he's he's i believe he's been the coach for the past two three years and the students there if we're reading off the fun facts about them they all love their coach we have we have uh <laughs> gene king a, aka we have uh. the fan the the, the peak header fan club president and totally you not unitado via simp the I worship its peak header and AM manager for the peak header fan club. <laughs> we have Rio Futaba, who is the peak header fan club treasurer. Facade, the peak header worshiper. <laughs> and then and we then, also just have, you know, good old peak header. He's in the jungle for this game. So, yeah, we, <laughs> we've got the, the whole squad ready for. Wait, wait, for wait, wait, wait. Wait. I, wait, it's. I. Did I misunderstand this? I thought he was the coach. I didn't realize he was also. Oh, my. <laughs> I mean, he's on my screen right here. Alpha, so yeah. Wait, wait, wait. No, no, he's, no. He's I'm right, I'm, uh, over I'm there. so sorry. For some reason, I thought Pete Ketter was older. And from, from our conversation, it sounded like he was the coach. So my apologies to the audience at home. 
I no. Uh, well, I. <laughs> I don't think so. I well, true, true. Um, but I. <laughs> Pete Ketter's only in eleventh grade. I thought they were older. Well, the, go. we the got a more, prodigy the on more, our hands. The, the more you know, the more you know. Oh my goodness. Um. Okay. I. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I I am completely caught off guard. I just for <laughs> I didn't realize when I first talked to him I was talking to like a freshman <laughs> essentially. Um but this is cool. And Pete Ketter pulling out a signature Karthus pick. Oh man, this this is going to be exciting. I know we haven't been really looking at the draft phase Max because I wanted to kind of catch up on the dossiers of everyone here but yeah. this is going to be very very exciting longhorns looking to defend their championship title for northview varsity they have the rumble after banning the morgana away piquetter matching with the karthus so now smacks when we're looking at this composition you have you have decent long range with the trisana and the rumble silas gonna be able to take some ultimates with the hijack so far the only useful one or the best one seems like that requiem and longhorns might try to stay away from any powerful long range engage tools hmm. Ooh, nar gives over one of those to silas uh if used well uh, we still don't know what lane the silas is going to be going to the rumble as well there's still flex picks uh popping up over there on the side of northview but we're pretty certain i would say that there's the Tristana is going to be going down to that bottom lane. Um, this is just a really nice champion to have in a composition like this, Rafa, where you have lots of long range on this team. You have lots of dive early game. This is the perfect champion to do exactly that. But we got a Riven Slam on the fifth pick on red side, oh, Rafa. Riven baby. for Northview in game one of the finals. The Derpy Legend, YT. Does that mean they have a YouTube? Do they have Ooh. a Riven YouTube channel? Shall I look Ooh. it up? Smacks, you must do the mountain deed and do some research for us. We the shall Derby see if the legend. Mm. Well, while Smacks is looking that up, taking a look over these two compositions for game one of this best of three. Do you like the fact that Longhorns have split up their damage profile across the solo lanes and jungle, both physical damage laners in Gnar and Renekton for the solo lanes. Karthus providing a ton of magic damage straight from the jungle. And more than likely this Kai'Sa, even though Kai'Sa does do split damage in magic damage from her passive, as well as just straight up auto attacks being physical. If she invests more into the physical damage route, then it will de-incentivize the members of Northview Varsity to build magic resist which then allows Karthus to build straight up magic penetration and just deal tons of damage off of the requiem as to all five members as well you don't have to hit anything you can just press it while you're in the base and it'll still attack everyone with that one so uh requiem can be really powerful like you mentioned though silas can steal that one away and it can still be just as deadly on that champion he does build a lot of ability power sometimes a little bit less magic penetration than something like the Karthus, but you can still use that to great effect and other abilities are coming to mind as well. The Renekton, which is actually going mid lane, by the way, uh, will be a pretty deadly one. You get a lot of HP with that one. Um, I believe the Fury regeneration applies to his mana as well. If I'm not mistaken, maybe they maybe they got rid of that. Because uh, I know that used to be a thing. Maybe it's gone. Mm. However, it can be very useful nonetheless for Silas. So he's got some ultimates here. I'm really looking at this Riven, though, as the response to Gnar in the top lane. And for the the Derpy Legend, who I just looked up on YouTube, I found some Rocket League videos. I don't know if that's actually him, <laughs> but if he can confirm it to us later on, then I'll drop us out. If that's, if that's actually him, and it's the Rocket League videos that I saw. So, Derpy Legend, hit me up. Anyway... The, the Riven here uh, in the top lane against Gnar, this can be a pretty nice counter pick where you have so much mobility where Gnar can't really hop away and you have the crowd control with the broken wings on the knockup and you have your stun as well. Can be pretty deadly up there. You can find yourself in solo kill situations. So I'm excited to see the Riven mechanics in that lane. Yeah. Uh, you thought that 
there that i'm okay let me let me form my words here appropriately smacks in a family friendly audience uh this ribbon can up the gnar yeah, to, to put it bluntly and uh gnar's hop is on a 15 second cooldown ribbon's dash is on a nine second cooldown combined with the stun that's also i think it's a nine or ten second cooldown level one and then broken wings is i think a 12 second cooldown basically there's always a window where riven will be able to punish gnar when he doesn't have hop so this is a this is a uh, lane that can be very brutal for gnar to survive in and if the derpy legend having put in enough games on riven which we will find out if they're able to punish that lane incredibly well then this gnar is not going to have a fun time and we we can see situations where rumble will have stronger gang pressure over karthus because it, it's karthus Car karthus wants to farm fast wants to get to level six and impact lanes that way you can walk up with karthus throw down a wall of pain and try to hit your skittles on top of them but the rumble will have more immediate pressure just because you can always walk up and fire the electric harpoons will not only apply damage and slows and the flame spitter is a lot easier to consistently get off than actually laying uh getting the lay waves from karthus either way these junglers clear the camp so incredibly quickly so we will likely see these two just battle it out in their own jungles uh, but just like you're mentioning rafa Rumble has that possibility to run down Karthus. With those Electro Harpoons, the slows are brutal. You reduce the magic magic resistance of your opponent when you land that one as well. So definitely a possibility. I would expect both of these junglers to, to level up to level six and then uh, see where it goes from there as these team fights can be really volatile, especially in the bottom lane where we're seeing the Kai'Sa versus Tristana and then also the Thresh versus Karma, both of these pairings really want to have that possibility to go aggressive and be opened up by their other teammates to do so. Because when you are confident enough as a team where your Kai'Sa can ult into the backline or your Tristana can rocket jump into the backline, then you know you're in a favorable position because you can have all that confidence in the world that your team is going to back you up. You've got the teamwork online. Oh, look at all those rainbows there, Rafa. They got the matching <laughs> icons. <laughs> Very nice. That's incredible. Wow. The Pete Ketter fan club, aka the Lambert Longhorns, all matching with their rainbow trailblazing. Incredible stuff. And I like how Pete Ketter has also gone for the exhaust on the Karthus. Flash just doesn't seem that necessary. If you already get, if you're already caught out, you might, you're just going to flash, or flash anyway. You might as well just try and take them down in a one v one, and an exhaust can help you win a lot of those, those one v one skirmishes that you normally might not. Yeah, can be pretty helpful right there. It also provides you a nice slow to land the lay waste abilities afterward. So we are getting a pause real quick. Um, we'll we'll update on why that is in a bit if we if, if it goes long enough it might just come right back sometimes the, the early game pauses just quick fix and it's all set but uh in the meantime yeah the the exhaust for karthus can be pretty useful just like you're mentioning in those 1v1s later on too on your team when you have these dive threat champions coming into you like the silos or the tristan or the ribbon just having that exhaust late game can be really beneficial and on karthus a champion who doesn't really mind if he ends up dying in a team fight because he can still cast all of his abilities after death post-mortem the exhaust is really good because you then you're always going to be in range you're always going to be in that front line and if you can save the rest of your team by reducing the damage of your opponents that's more than worth it mm -hmm. i think the other thing to consider too is that like apart from escaping you know when the amount of times that Karthus can use flash aggressively is just to, is, is a suicide mission essentially you you are just trying to throw yourself into the thick of the fray maybe you're trying to get over the wall for a dragon steel or a baron steel but 
that's not always the best route unless like you have no other option. So a lot of times I think if you are kiting backwards and, and allowing the team to come into you as Karthus rather than trying to force the engage yourself, that usually ends up better for the way that uh, Lambert's Longhorns want to play this game because then they're coming right into the Karthus. It's, you're going to get more time on that Defile, which, you know, it, even if you're not hitting the Skittles, once you're past level 13, your E, which is the Defile, will be maxed out. And that does a lot of damage over time if people are just sitting on it. And so if you've got a lot of M pen, if you uh, if this Karthus is running things like uh, a Rhylize for, for utility later on, if the game gets late enough, that is a giant AOE slow field that they're on top of. It's it's almost like a budget Anivia Glacial Storm as well. <laughs> or a budget Equalizer, which is what they will be playing up against. In this Very game. true. So uh, going to have both of those battling it out. If we do end up seeing the Rylai's Coastal Scepter tech, I know usually Karthus likes to just stack ability power and ability power and ability power. Please, yeah, please, that's please usually the best thing. That. Yeah, it can be pretty pretty useful when your ultimate starts to deal a thousand damage to all five members of the team it's a good way to pad your stats later on because you can't miss that as, as it turns yeah. out <laughs> it's especially especially coming from the jungle role where the even though jungle has been stronger than the past couple of seasons it's nowhere near the economy levels of season six where you could be full build on jungle uh <laughs> faster than your solo lanes especially in a competitive setting the the econ and the experience you know is pretty strong but like you said smacks in, in, from a jungle perspective as karthus you are just trying to max out the amount of ability power you have so you will always do a large you'll always be giving a large impact in fights just getting off the requiem because that you 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 are essentially just trying to get a large spike of aoe burst damage in fights every single time and if you can do that then even if you miss your skittles even if you miss damage on the defile your requiem will still do its job absolutely well i am losing a few pixels over here hopefully that gets <laughs> uh I'm, I'm trying to close some things but oh no yeah, smacks I we're losing you, you to can, the void i know you can see less of me right now i i'm trying you're to starting to turn it's happening you're turning into the hulk <laughs> oh no you're going, they you're going like purple I'm angry <laughs> i'm uh, i'm doing my nar cosplay right now actually i'm just stacking up my rage bar so that's where i'm at uh <laughs> uh we're we're looking at the the pause uh yet again though the mid laner in this game has some high ping at this, at this time, so we're going to try to figure out that. Uh, maybe running into the same problem as me down there in Georgia. Uh, <laughs> as it turns out, I am um, uh, a little fuzzy right now. Hopefully that all gets solved. Hopefully it will. In fact, Max, if, uh, if you need some time to uh, correct your weight balance, or uh, if you need to refresh and reconnect, I am more than happy to take over for production side, as uh, I'm happy to entertain but for smacks before you go i i want to kind of give you a little bit of a a thought-provoking question here because when we look at this draft we already talked a little bit about kind of the scaling factor of the karthus and the kaisa them being the late game insurance policies but it, it, this this renekton and silas mid lane matchup a lot of times we pick Renekton whenever we want to have a lane bully to have some early agency. But, you know, the Silas pick, he, he's got some healing to match up of his own. He, he does depend on mana as a resource bar. But, you know, based on what we saw from before. Oh, never mind. You know what? Hey, we're getting back into the game. Well, continuing on, I, I want to see how much attention does Rumble actually pay attention to this mid lane for Bento Docs because... Renekton's, Renekton's got an Ignite. He's got Pressy Attack, so this is a very aggressive lane setup meant to kill. But can Rumble turn things around? We're going to be finding out as the game is now underway. Pause is over. Man. everything is solved. No, give, give me an answer, Smax. You can't just cough out like that. You got to... No. no. You know what? I, uh, I can't predict the future. <laughs> but you can give your best guess. I can't try. Give me I can try. Give me an educated guess, Smax. Lay your like, thoughts down on the line. I feel like the Longhorns are pretty favored in this early game. 
Um, they do have the Karthus, so you do have to be pretty careful with that. It looks like he's also skipping out on Krugs, so maybe an early brawl is on the cards, but it, it feels to me like this Renekton just has so much pressure in this lane that even if Rumble does show up, you still have to be worried, um, because he, he's just a really powerful duelist in the early stage of the game. The Ignite and the press the attack don't hurt at all, so I'm feeling like with Peacatter clearing really quickly on this map right now, he's going to be able to get onto the map really soon and maybe go for the Scuttle Crab Brawl and uh, start being this menace of a Karthus that we know Karthus can be. Because if you look across the board on this team as well, Renekton and Nar are not champions that necessarily need a lot of gold to perform their same late game duties as usual, but Karthus is. So I really like the way that this team is set up to pump all of the resources into Karthus, making sure that Peacatter is a threat later on. Thank you, Smax. See, that is the hard-hitting analysis <laughs> that I wanted to hear. As, check out the lane oh matchup. This, this is how it plays out. Flash is going to be traded up, and the Derpy Legend comes out with first blood. B. Ketter has arrived to the party, but he knows that there's a jungler waiting in the rings. Swift. Wait, wait, wait. Uh-oh. That, that's a barbecue exhaust. <laughs> Karthus, oh no. And P. Kenner not even bothering to burn the exhaust there because he knows that there's no way out and there's no changing of that situation whatsoever. Yeah, you need to watch this replay on Derpy Legend. This is the kind of stuff in this top lane that can completely obliterate that early uh, analysis that I was attempting to give. Looking on the picture in picture down there, though, we did see a flash. See Peacatter getting burned to a crisp, but Futaba is in no man's land over there. Oh, got hit too. What? Wait, how did he get over there? We were watching it down there. Uh, Futaba was trying to duel Bento Docks, but the the jungler here for Northview pushed him out of this lane. We get to watch this one yet again. Oh, Bento did it... flash here. Yeah. Oh man. So Rio. Had nowhere to go. Just trying to run run around. Maybe make it over the other side of the wall, but Venom Doc's beautiful app's gonna abduct, catches him out in pursuit. Just like that. Northview Varsity. Three kills to their side smack. So this just goes to show that the kind of the early game dominance that uh you're projecting that Lambert would have. Not quite coming through. I I, I know that the, the Riven definitely, though, is more favored in this Gnar matchup, as we saw Derby Legend make an example of in that solo kill. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it just turns out that uh, Peacat are coming out on the map a little bit earlier. It doesn't quite matter uh, when the, the lane situation isn't as favorable as you'd like. And then uh, Sweet gets to just run around and burn everyone down even though he didn't participate in the kill onto futaba he well directly on the scoreboard rather he did still make sure that the kill came through in the end so uh, i i like this jungle pathing so far he's able to continue on that rampage and crusade too all the way up to level five and will soon have access to the equalizer well, we got some downtime, Smack says. I don't think there's going to be any action anytime soon. We got to figure out how we're saying this Rumble's name. Is it Swiddle? I was going to say Sweet. Sweet? Okay. I, and then just kind of ignore the L. <laughs> you, <laughs> you know what? I, I, I think if there's anyone that is friends with the Rumble, that would be so kind to tell us how to properly pronounce their name as see a mid lane 1v1 fight that quickly turns into a 1v2 because P. Ketter has come from the woodworks laying down the exhaust making it easier for Rio to take down Meadow Docks but Rumble Rumble from the jungle Sweet or Swiddle you choose gamers as they've got the equalizer cutting off the escape oh not quite okay quite the mark but it's okay P. Ketter Shows up on the bot side of the map. And now for Northview Varsity. The first response from the side of Lambert High School has been made, Smacks. 
that it has, we get to watch the strength in the early game from Futaba's Renekton here. Oh, that minion right there is about to die. That makes sure that the level 6 comes through just in the nick of time. And then Peak Gatter's here with the exhaust just to make sure that the kill comes through. Really nicely done. The wave management from Futaba is coming up clutch. You see on the... I'm back, back, snap back to reality, as they say. So Up goes gravity. Took away the Gromp, I believe, in the opposition jungle. So continuing the, the rumble uh, forest fire, as you could say. <laughs> Flame spitter in the jungle. Only you can prevent rumble jungle. Rumble doesn't want to lose himself in the music in the moment. As there, <laughs> we're getting we're getting crazy with the references right now. We're like three layers deep. Hey, dude, you you, you started it. I, had to, I, I, I was waiting. I was waiting, man. And Ooh. oh, check this out. Oh, we only got one wow. shot in that requiem. Totally unitado. Gonna get some reinforcements from the base. As you called it out at the top of the the cast, P. Ketter can always just press the <laughs> hit the requiem from the comfort and safety of the fountain. He's not gonna be there for the dragon secure, but Northview Varsity trying to turn this one around in their favor. The Equalizer already splitting up via Simp and Hiragi. They will get taken down. Oh. Futaba though, trying to turn things around. He's got the Dominus and he slices and dices through Rumble, but now it is Bentodox with his Requiem. Trying to take some damage off of Piketter and Rio Futaba, and they clean up house onto the Landbird Longhorns. Oh, that fight turnaround was gigantic. We got to see both Requiems casted on both teams. It is Northview who walk away with the Drake as well. They get to start that one off, and then we get to see the Lantern tried to save via Simp, but it was flashed away, and then it ended up being a bait. He walked back onto the Furnace. We do get to see Futaba deals just a ridiculous amount of damage on this Renekton, but at the end of the day, he is still in this 1v2 situation. Bento Dox makes it a 1v3, and they get to just clean up the rest of this play, Rafa. It was just a huge, huge wipe off the back of that. We do know, though, at the top lane, they were not a part of this one. Solo kills for both of them. They could make things a little bit more interesting later on, but for now, Northview take the lead. It is a slight lead. Just under 500 gold here for Northview Varsity. But seven kills to the name. Nothing to brag or nothing uh -oh. nothing to shy away from. Uh-oh. Equalizer comes out. Unitato, the Flash. Derby Legend trying to follow up with that. Blade of the Exile. Piketter and Futaba have made their way as reinforcements, and now Swiddle and Derpy Legend trying to make their way out, but then Odox answering with the teleport. Oh. Meanwhile, on the bottom side, oh no, you knew Yunichi. My friend, good night. And Yunichi was caught in transit, trying to make their way up through the jungle, but unfortunately, Shinoa and VSM were there to respond, so that lead is growing a little bit slower right now. Hook does not oh. connect, so it's not going to be Arnie falling also but yeah this is this is getting pretty close we got so many fights going on at the same time rafa all the way down in georgia for the finals nice hook. that's got to be terrifying but then again there is a blue trinket or the 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 blue scryer's orb that was used so Yunichi knew someone was in the jungle just unfortunately underestimated that they would become hunting for him. <laughs> yeah. You know what that might have been? They might have been looking up top lane and didn't notice. Ah, oh, that is true. Oh, Equalizer nice comes out once again, and Unitado does not have Flash to escape the gank this time around. Sweet. Are we... Are we, no, no one has told us if it's sweet or swill, <laughs> or if it's either or, so we're going to go with sweet. Bento Docs. Wow. That's not sweet. That's death. Yeah. The burst damage with Renekton and Karthus, as long as someone is stunned, the Lay Waste Pops will connect nearly every single time right there. Lots of damage in the bot lane, though. Wow, oh, what a hook. but beautiful death sentence will give his life for the greater cause, but Hiragi making the play with Via Simp and P. Ketter from downtown to the river from the Requiem. Doesn't look like it's going to be enough damage to take down Yunichi. Oh! oh. 
That's mm. unfortunate. Under the turret, it's rooted up by Unichi with the escape. That is a huge, huge play right there for the bottom lane of Northview right there. And it was the aggressive play as well against them. Peaketter was there. It was, in essence, a 2v3 that they just won. We get to watch the top side play yet again. We get to see the rumble gank. And this is this is where the equalizer is uh, coming in really big. He's practicing. He's practicing in the game. That one was beautiful. I think the way that they played out that gank as well, once Unitato burns the hop, you get the, you get the Chilling Smite slowdown, and then it guarantees a perfect position for that equalizer and just kind of body blocking Unitato's way. So even if you're not auto attacking him, he is just burning to a crisp. But props to Hiragi. Does go down for his efforts here, but gets a beautiful flay into hook to make sure that Arnie has nowhere else to go. Now, the rest of this is not the best for the Longhorn from Lambert High School. As Yunichi is able to have the last laugh. Yeah. Karma is just so good at kiting, Rafa. You can't run her down. She will be able to escape. Unless it is literally the entire team or some crazy amount of crowd control on top of her. Oh. Right. You know, Equalizer is a hard ability to land. It is. It, it, I mean, we've even seen MSI pro players with them. It just goes to show that Rumble's not an easy champion to pick up, and they're going to go down for their efforts. Shut down going in for P. Ketter. Will also fall to Derby Legend, who has come in with the teleport, and the Blade of the Exile popping off with the second cast of the Wind Slash. Now pressing forward with Northview Varsity. Hiragi trying to buy as much time for VSM to get out alive. Will pay for their life. This is the first major top lane teleport from the game right now. Derpy Legend makes it stick incredibly well. And that's a three for one off the end as well. It's going to be a Drake too. The Drake stack is coming to fruition for Northview. And that's a that's going to be their scaling online later on, which is super valuable against a team with Karthus. Karthus is one of the best scaling champions in the entirety of League of Legends. Once you get into that late game situation, he is nearly unmatched unless you're like Cassidy or Kale or something in that variety. But you can see that in this stage of the game, everyone's level 8 through 10. Not quite as powerful as something like a Riven with the ultimate coming through with the teleport. So much mobility also to just continue this play. They ran him down so far, Rafa. Indeed. That is, uh. It is what happens when you have nowhere else to run. That's scary. Oh, it's like yeah. a horror movie. Uh, well, I was about to say a zombie apocalypse. And it oh. brings me back to my uh, Left 4 Dead 2 playing days, actually. What type of zombie in Left 4 Dead would Riven be? Oh, uh... Hmm. We'll probably have to ask Josh about that one. He's more in tune with it than I am, but totally Unitato in tune with trying to oh. mess up Sweet right now. They definitely do it because of the Requiem from downtown, but Ryo Futaba does not do enough damage to be able to save Unitato from a certain death. Venodox being able to trade one back in vengeance of the fallen jungler. But now we have quite a few people in this mid lane here, Smack says. Yeah. That mid lane turret is close to falling in favor of the Lambert Longhorn. Closer than it usually would be, too, because you are up against Tristana. This champion has a ton of extra turret siege capabilities with the E explosive shot. We'll see if that one does land onto the turret. You can see they're sticking around. But something that is good to mention off of that play, it was a one-for-one. One. Unitata was the one who died on the side of the Longhorns, though, and you can see Derpy Legend was able to pick up another wave in that top lane push it into the turret and something we didn't mention before was that the rift herald was dropped up there as well so even though unitato is up a few waves in this game he's still going to be down a little bit in gold thanks to the kills with the teleport play and that turret plates all falling through with the rift herald earlier on we're almost at the 17 minute mark approaching Kind of the the wake of the mid game, as we already see one item power spikes being completed across the board for all members. That next dragon coming up in about two and a half minutes will be potentially a deciding one at that, as this is where 
the composition for Northview Varsity is going to be at their strongest. You're going to have this Trasana that can always ramp up in power and continuous item power spikes, but when you're looking at the rest of these champions, Rumble, this is kind of this is the best that Rumble is going to be, especially when it's the level 11 mark. After that, compared to the Karthus and what the Karthus can bring to the table, we'll get outscaled. Team fights are where Rumble shines also. If you can route the opponents into a corridor with that equalizer, then you end up dealing way, way, way too much damage to deal with. Especially with this Night Harvester, you can get all of those pops onto your opponents. You can see the Northwestern are still up in this game by about a thousand gold, still trying to attack all of these turrets across the entirety of the rift. They've been able to play on the offensive throughout this one. Oh. This might be a solo kill. Wow, it is. Uh. Hmm. He's trying to charge up the Mega Nar, I think, right there. That yeah, might have I, 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 yeah. Yeah. I, I think Unitata was anticipating they would hit Mega Nar form before Benadox just blasted him with yeah. <laughs> so much burst just damage. A lot of burst, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> just. Just kind of underestimating. You have to remember, Unitato, that you did optimize into play to steel caps. So, in the 1v1 against Riven, yeah, it's pretty solid defense options. But against Beno Docks, that's magic damage, buddy. So, this is, yeah. uh, gotta, gotta be a little bit more careful in taking those trades. Thankfully, Unitato will be back up on the field before the dragon comes up. So, it's not too much to gain for the side of Northview Varsity. But they are setting up preemptive vision around this Dragon Pit first. Oh, Ari did just use the rocket jump. Wow, okay. <laughs> Ari All right. just said, good night, Piketter. And no jungler means no one to contest the Dragon for Northview Varsity. Claiming this would put them at soul points, Max. That was nuts. That was the assassination threat of Tristana. We talked about it in the draft, too. If you, as the AD carry in this game, are confident enough to jump forward, that's how you know that your team is feeling good in this game. You're feeling like you are ahead. And for Northview, I can't blame them right now. This is going to put them at soul point. I really enjoyed the play that they made to set up for this, too. You could see that they were all playing aggressive in all three lanes, in the jungle as well every single which way was pushing forward for Northview and then Rafa what did they do they all recalled at the same time so they they arrived on the map for the dragon with their gigantic power spikes we get to see it in action right there on the Peaketter and we're still seeing it forward after that you can see this bot lane turrets going to fall they got the mid lane turret every single thing is going the way of Northview now at Soul Point, the gold lead. What once was just barely 1,000 is now climbed to about 3,000. Northview Varsity, they're in the driver's seat for game one. And remember, Smacks, that they were the ones that lost in the previous finals. Lambert Longhorns are the defending champions from fall 2020. So Northview Varsity, if they are able to start off the revenge series with a win, it would put them in a strong foothold to close out the series going into game two. I'm, I'm just really still admiring the teamwork that they've showed us in this game so far. Really understanding where on the map this team is strong, where they can make plays, and where they need to be to set them up as well. It's a really valuable skill to have on a team for here for League of Legends, just talking with all of your teammates, making sure that everyone is on the same page for these plays, making sure you can coordinate with all five members, because if you're going for all the plays just by yourself, it's not going to be nearly as powerful as when you have everyone else at their strongest that they possibly can be on the Rift, making sure that you have multiple things going forward for you at the same time. And look at this. They're even showing some restraint as well. You can see that Bento Dox, he's going very far aggressive in this top lane, but they know they don't have all the lanes going at the same time. They know that Bento is perhaps putting himself a little bit vulnerable right now, waiting for Sweet to come into position, and now they can go in for the turret. This is really nice, Rafa. The vision control as well 
has been quite strong from Northview Varsity as if if our production can show a little bit of fog of war toggles, we can get to see there's only one control ward from the side of Lambert Longhorns just in that pocket, the entrance towards the Baron. So that is the only thing that is valuable for the Longhorns, being able to provide them a little bit of a safe entrance into the Baron pit. But oh, man. the rest of the map is dark. And they're going to start up the Baron. And that control ward now being spotted out by Unichi. Going to be able to secure it. Blue Scryer's Orb comes out from Lambert Longhorns. Oh. They're going to try to collapse onto this Baron. 4,000 health. Teleport coming in as well from the Derpy Legend. 2,000 health on the Ooh. Baron. Can they get in there? Peak Header trying to walk up and smite it, but it's going to be secured by Northview Varsity. But they've already used a majority of their ultimates. Can they survive? Can they get out of the pit? Derpy Legend already seeing that his last comrade will fall. He's going to make his way out. Lambert Longhorns, despite losing the Baron, will be able to take down three members in the aftermath. They might be able to take down four as well, Bento. He has the Baron teleport. Does he escape? <gasps> he does oh, not. Oh, the death sentence lands Bento Dox. I don't know if he fights his way out of this oh. one, but that's a lot of healing on the Kingslayer. And two the Unitado has just oh. gone mini. Oh, no. Bento Dox. Oh. Bento Dox. Don't do him like this, man. Chasing him all the way into the base. One more abs going abduct into the Kingslayer. We'll do it. But Unitado has the hop. Now Bento Dox. Might have overextended unless he gets another cooldown up. Doesn't have flash available. Whoa. Goes in Kingslayer right onto Peak Header. <laughs> he takes him down with him. And Derpy Legend still has the Baron as well. So all the while, while sidetracking side -tracking them, Bento Dox <laughs> gets so many kills off the rip right there. I think he made it an even trade in the end but the baron still does go over to northview you see that with the full onslaught of the longhorns they are able to brute force their way in and actually take this fight but <laughs> bento talks let's watch his let's watch his magical journey throughout the rest of this one actually no we can't equalizer splitting off via simp and totally unitado the ragi might be caught out here Throws down the box, tries to slow down the opposition. Not going to be enough. Wind Slash comes out from Derpy Legend. Broken Ooh. Blade onto two, knock upping via Simp, taking him down as well. And Northview Varsity, once again, will find the numbers advantage in the jungle skirmish, taking down the bottom lane of the Lambert Longhorns. And Mountain Soul will be secured. Breaks locked down, bot lane killed, waves pushing in. Northview have so much to offer for this game. Number one, they're looking to close this one out. Baron is going to expire in about 40 seconds. They still have it bot lane. You can see the Derpy Legend is still alive and well with that one. He's going to be able to push in the wave, but that's not the wave to look at right now. Mid lane turret is under fire, about half HP. They don't have the Baron wave over here, though, so I don't believe they can do it on this wave. Still going to be looking for more later on. Derpy Legend, you can see he's, he's moving his way on over, but the Baron's going to expire here relatively soon. I think that they've gotten all that they can with that objective. We get to see this fight again. Arnie is doing such an incredible job of being able to coordinate and kite his way, even in number situations as well. And just looking at the rest of this fight, you see the strength in numbers when a whenever Northview Varsity are able to fight in these chokeholds as Equalizer being a powerful tool, but also it's easier for Derpy Legend to be able to catch out people with the amount of mobility that they, he has on the Riven. And other than Renekton and Gnar occasionally when Hop is available, none of these champions have, have ways of being able to escape over walls as easily. They don't have free form dashes. They don't have really any useful mobility outside of flash to be able to use defensively on on a whim to just uh, for terrain scale <laughs> well blast cone <laughs> is is a universal concept smacks please please summon this rift spawn me a blast cone so i may hop over this wall i'll do anything i wonder if i'll you have buy to do, like, the new ritual. luck skin if you please oh no don't don't suit that low <laughs> Lux has enough skins already. Maybe a ritual summon for the blast cone could be enacted. If you uh you like take your hands off the keyboard and hit the pray G mode. Mm. <laughs> Do a summoning chant for the blast cone to come just in time. 
Do a Star Guardian Var dance. Yeah. <laughs> Northview Varsity, though. The pace has somewhat slowed down now that they no longer have the Baron buff. But with Mountain Soul on their hands, they're still, still in the driver's seat. They have picked up far more kills. But the gold lead has remained relatively the same. And the longer the game goes on, the less meaningful a 3,000 gold lead means in the grand scheme of things. As Lionbird Longhorns will be able to catch up in power spikes. And you just have to keep, keep in mind that... This Karthus Requiem will start doing truckloads of damage mm. the later the game goes. Especially if the game stalls out to the point where everyone is level 16, then this is... There's a world where even Northview Varsity are not able to close out this game. Then they will have to ensure that Lambert Longhorns cannot win a fight when Elder Dragon is on the table and they take it. Because then that is the win con to get back in the game if you're Lambert. That is the good news for Lambert. Good news for Northview is that they have the Mountain Soul, and that is a permanent buff. So the extra shield and resistances will be really beneficial. Perhaps this... Oh, the vision. Wait, was that was that a red one? Yeah, oh, that, no, no, that's no. all them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I, okay, so fun, fun strategy thing. If Northview does that, and they are the one that drops the, the vision thing... Then it baits them in to get into the bush, but that's not what happened. We, we saw the vision uh, trinket was used by the Asim, so uh, throw that all out the window. Their plans have been foiled. They uh, gotta try plan B now. Two minutes on the Elder Dragon. Baron has respawned, though. Northview Varsity are just gonna try to do their best to burn this down ASAP. 7,000 on the Baron. The rest of the members of Lambert High School are falling in, but that's a nice equalizer and a beautiful... Whoa! Banto Docks getting the Gnar ultimate and just thrusting everyone into the equalizer. But wait a minute. Look on the other side of the fight. Via Sip, untouched. Flash forward with a the flay. They're going to try to turn it around, but Banto Docks still untouched as well. Trying to do his best to heal up as much as possible with the CDR and the ability haste, but it's not going to be enough. Via Sip! My God! Comes out with the Quadra, and Lambert High School just might be back in the game. The layering of ultimates from Northview looked so, so clean, but they didn't hit Via. They did not attack the Kai'Sa at all, still untouched throughout the entirety of it. And gets a quadra kill after it all as well. Look at this. Just barely uses the E to get out of the Gnar ultimate stolen away. Gets the execute damage with the collector onto Arnie. Gets to survive throughout this entire fight. And even Shinoa gets to survive there too, flashing out with the Dark Passage. Quadra kill. It's going to be the Barret as well. The Gold Swing. You have to imagine as we go back to live, it's going to be in favor of the Longhorns. And it is about a thousand. They've made the comeback. And Elder Dragon is about to spawn in 20 minutes. And if you're Northview Varsity, having lost that fight... It can shake up the confidence a bit. Knowing that for the majority of the game, Northview Varsity have come out on top in these chokeholds, in these Baron fights, in these objective controls. But now Lambert Longhorn. Kaisa has now been unlocked. Three items. Fail Blazer or... Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, Equalizer, not quite the mark there. And burning it early on means that there's an opportunity for Lambert Longhorn to force a fight where Northview Varsity are not going to have one of their more powerful ultimates to dissuade them off the Elder Dragon. I know the Equalizer cooldown is short, but it's not that short, Smax. Yeah, you gotta wait for a little while longer. The Drake is up. The time is running out. Everyone in this corridor for Northview. Have to be so, so careful right now. They're being routed out. They're having to go through the mid lane. All the while, I believe Futaba was setting up for the Drake. Now it is the Longhorns who have complete control over this. They can throw their abilities out. They can chunk the health bars, perhaps getting through the Mountain Soul Shield. Look at that, Unichi. A little bit low now. Just going to reset their wave, well, do it all over again. The Baron's here. Okay, well, Lambert Longhorns, they had a short window where they could have forced a fight. They could have started up the Elder Dragon, but the Equalizer's actually back up now, Smack. So Ooh. it's this is... They, they had to be more proactive on the engagement there. They decided not to take any chances. 
They go for the siege, but they have to be conscious of the fact that Equalizer is now back up. So in these moments, Max, you need to pick your windows and you need to commit. Otherwise, Northview Varsity, they can throw out these ultimate abilities and they'll come back up. Good news is that the Baron is still here for the Longhorns. They can potentially get that bot lane turret, but they're losing out mid. They gave up mid priority for just a moment. And now there's a wave crashing on top of them. There's that equalizer, Rafa. Ooh. It routes them off from being nice able to hook. defend the base. A teleport is coming in. It's a nice flay into the box. Gonna buy some time. Unitado's about to go. Mega gets the animation cancel. Throws him right into the thick of the fight. Look at Via Simp. Still untouched, still not touched. Oh. But no, finally goes down. Better box finds him. And now Arnie is the only marksman alive. But wait a second. Lambert Longhorns, even without Gene King, are still pressing on forward. And Elder Dragon is now available. No jungler on the table for Northview Varsity. This could be the Elder going over to the Lambert Longhorns. I think it is, Rafa. They lose out on their mid lane inhibitor turret, but it's more than worth it if they can win that fight and take this Elder Dragon. That's more than enough damage to cut through the extra shielding and resistances of the Mountain Soul buff. Going to be taken down 4,000 HP. There is no smite available. Sweet is still dead. There it is, Rafa. We get to see this comeback continuing to blossom for the Longhorns in this game, one of the finals. And look how much they committed for Via Simp. Tra Equalizer hits. I'm pretty sure Benobox gets on top of them as well. Looks like Arnie was not able to, once Unitado came out, Arnie has to hit the Gnar instead. So from this point on in the fight, I'm at a loss for words, Max. Uh, everyone is just a little too scattered there from Northview. They can't secure any any more kills past VSM. They knew what they needed to do. They needed to kill the person who just got a quadra kill. Unfortunately, though, there's still way more damage on their team here for Longhorns. And now it's going to be... It's going to be inflated even further, Rafa. They've got the Elder Dragon now. They're pushing down mid. Baron has expired, but waves are coming through. They have so much damage. And look at this. Their front line is well above 3,000 HP each. This is before Meganar comes through. You have to imagine that number increases to 4,000 when the rage is completed. So members of Northview have to be so, so careful. They need to just give this turret up. Yeah, shoutouts to Futaba, who are just taking a look at their build. I know we don't talk about items that often, but look how they have itemized this game. After the Gore Drinker, it's hysterics into a Visage. This person is essentially just now a off tank. They did not itemize for the split push. They did not itemize for the 1v1. They are just trying to soak up as much damage as possible because they know that Via Simp and P. Ketter will be putting out the majority of the damage and all the damage that they need to win these fights. And now with Elder Dragon available, or if you have Varsity, their backs are now against the wall. The Equalizer comes out trying to kill the minion wave, but they already take down the Inhibitor turret. Inhibitor should fall just as well. Do they back away or do they keep advancing? The minion wave is very far away, but the, the fight might still be favorable. Going to go over to the top lane. I like this play a lot. They can continue their advantage. They can probably get that top lane turret. Maybe after that, when the Elder Drake does expire, they can just take all that gold, go back to the base, and pick up a bunch of extra items. Extend the gold lead. You can see it's about 5,000 up now. After that turret, it's going to be a little bit more, too. This is feeling really good for the Longhorns right now, Rafa. The Baron's available as well. Death Brush is set up. Do they fall into the trap? Oh, 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 the death sentence reveals all, though. Hiragi, quick on the trigger, was ready to capitalize, but Yunuchi with the quick, quick feet, able to dodge out on a potential pick that could have ended the game uh -oh. for Northvari, but they pick out Sweet. Zonius comes out, Yunichi falls, and the rest of the members of Northview Varsity are nowhere near to be able to bail out their comrades. Double kill comes in for Futaba. Five on three, smacks. A super minion as well. This might be enough firepower to take down the Nexus turrets and perhaps game number one in its entirety for the reigning champions in the Longhorns, Rafa. They're going to do it. 
Requiem doesn't seem to really do any damage there, but they might not need it because they still have VS Simp cleaning up the mess. Killer Instinct onto the backlight, but Derpy Legend answers back with the Wind Slash. But can they fight off a 1v3? Flash Stun comes out. Unitado about to go. Mega throws him against the wall. The slam down flash from Derpy Legend is not enough. And the ace is secure for Lambert Longhorns. And they take in game one. 37 minutes in a ridiculous comeback game for the Longhorns. They were down and out in the early game. But I told a lie there, Rafa. Out is a complete, complete lie, a falsehood for how much they were able to come back into this one. They lead in the end. They take that Baron. They take that Elder Dragon. Just close it out so beautifully well. The fights, they end up with a quadra kill as well for Via Samp on that last Baron fight we got to watch. Wow. Yeah. The, I, I was very impressed with both teams in this one, but it is going to be the Longhorns who take it in the end. I'm feeling like this is going to be a game three. These games are really close. BK, P. Ketter and the fan club definitely had some things to say about once Northview Varsity picked up that Mountain Soul. I mean, it... We thought that the game was going to be over right then and there. It, d it didn't seem like there would be enough burst damage, but just the way the team fights played out and the way that Lambert Longhorns were just working cohesively to make sure that Via Simp was kept alive as long as possible and essentially soaking up much more damage as off tanks with uh, with their solo champions versus the the, the composition that. Northview Varsity had. It just seems like it, it wasn't really a matter of like how much damage each one was putting out. It was like, okay, well, how much time can we buy for the marksmen to to clean up fights? And you saw in the last two fights, Arnie was not given the space needed to be able to free hit onto the front line of the uh, or, or any of the priority targets that were needed to be able to win those fights. So Northview Varsity going into this game too. They know that they can win the early game. They know that they can capitalize on leads, but they need to be able to find ways to accelerate that before it gets too late. Otherwise, Lambert Longhorns will be reclaiming the title once again. And we're going to find out what happens in this game too. Stay tuned.
Ladies and gentlemen, game two for the Georgia State Finals in the play versus spring 2021 championship finals in four high school is underway. It's going to come to you soon with that draft phase. But to kind of recap for all the folks that missed game one, Northview Varsity had a strong opener. They got up to Mountain Soul, but then one Baron fight was all that it took for the Lambert Longhorns, a.k.a. the P. Ketter Fan Club to turn things around in their favor. And from there, they're able to close out the game. 
After that game, I think I have to be a member of the Peak Hitter fan club as well, Rafa. The scaling. Oh, you would like to be inducted super, super into well. the Peak Hitter fan club? Yeah. I, I what think... do I need to do? What do I need to do? Well, uh, considering that Jeff, aka the to uh, Unitado, is the Peak Hitter Peak Hitter fan club president, you would have to hit them up. So, you know, uh, hit up at SmacksCast on Twitter. If you would, if you would like to give your blessing and in inducting him into the the Peak Hitter fan club, yes, uh, please do. Do I get a do I get a party hat? I feel like that would be fitting. You might get a pin. You might pin? get a little badge Ooh, of honor. Yeah, yeah. Honor right there. It might be fancy about it. I would love that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I I'm all in for that. Yeah, for sure. Put me in. I would love to be a member of the fan. But uh, yeah, after that one, I I feel like I'm I'm okay calling myself an unofficial member because I am a fan of how we got to see the Longhorns play that out. Their scaling was top notch. They played the mid jungle duo actually quite well in that game, even though they were put down pretty heavily. Still ended up finding some advantages in that lane, and throughout the game as well, we saw they did have to concede a few of the Drakes. We got to see four of them in a row picked up by Northview, which is usually a sign that the game is going to be over soon, but 37 minutes into this one, it completely flipped on its head. We got to see VSF take a quadra kill on the Kaisa in that one as well, and... I mean, after a game like that where it's so back and forth, a huge comeback comes through, I just want to see game two, Rafa. I want to see if they can do that again. Ah. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. So it does look like Rafa has been hit by the, uh, the Bard ultimate. He is currently in stasis, uh, as you can see him right there. He's looking nice and shiny. Uh, we're, we're expecting him to be returning here relatively soon, but uh, <laughs> he, I can still hear him in our in our comms. He is very sad, but he he will be returning. Uh, you know, Rafa, I know you can hear me right now. I'm supposed to keep talking, but I can't do it very well if you keep crying in my ears. So. <laughs> Are you back? Oh, okay. He, he's he's not back yet. I, uh... <laughs> uh, okay. So, anyway, while, while we're... While we're going through these technical difficulties, um, yeah, just to talk a little bit more about that last game, the the Longhorns they they bit, they built themselves a comp that I personally was a really big fan of, and I still am. The the Nar Renekton solo lanes came through, and like we were talking about in that game, they ended up having a strong yeah! early game. Okay. <laughs> We're back. You can talk with me about this. The the strong <laughs> early game, and then they transitioned later on into just being frontliners for the scaling members <laughs> of Piketter and Via Simp. Uh, and yeah, I, I I do believe is am I hearing this correctly, Rafa? Hello, I think you're. Hello, back. I am back, nice. and I have my tea. So ooh, okay, that was the problem. You didn't have tea before. Mm hmm. Well, now you do. It is it is time to spill the tea. Uh. Trying to sip and spill. Uh, I think for Northview Varsity, though, um, what we have to watch out for is Bento Box. Or, oh no, no, not Bento Box, Bento Docks. My apologies. <laughs> but <laughs> the Bento Docks in that game from we saw with the Silas, there's moments where they were turning around 1v3s, 1v2s. So getting not only a counter pick for for the Northview Varsity mid laner, well, I I think uh, being able to get a jungler like not not to say that the Rumble was a bad pick, the equalizers some of them were great, some of them did not hit the mark as well. But when it did, and then combined with Bento Dox, they were able to turn around a lot of those fights. Now that Bento Dox is on the blue side, however, either. You need to save counter pick for until the very end, if possible, or you need to get him a priority mid laner that will be able to smash and take over the game. 
I don't know if many of those exist in the current meta once the bans will come through, but we shall find out. Maybe yeah, Illusion. See. Maybe Tristana. Yone's banned away. Um, that was one of the ones that was banned away from Bento Doxic in game one. We also now see the respect for P. Ketter's Karthus and the respect for Bento Dox's Silas. So respect across the board. These guys have assigned what they feel like is the predicament and uh, the reason why the game went longer. The Renekton is also a piece of the puzzle, as we can see, Rafa. So uh, we're going to be getting a very different game number two. They even gave the respect ban of the Karthus for Piketter. But now, yeah. Morgana and Rumble are both available. Let's see if Piketter has been brushing up on his Flame Spitter and his Equalizers. Going for some Demacian Brawlers so far. So we can see the cover of the Jarvan and the Zin Zhao. Still thinking about it, though. Um, yeah, the, the Rumble is a recent addition to the Jungle Pool. It's a very powerful option to go for. Uh, but if... Uh, if it's not your your strongest Ooh. comfort, then maybe we're going to be getting something else, and it does look like that will be the case. Piketter's Xin Zhao jungle is very likely what we will be seeing in game two. I'm down for some Xin Zhao. About to start singing some Mulan right now if uh, we see a Xin Zhao montage in this game. But Northview Varsity, when we're looking at meta flavors... So far, having that Morgana is going to be powerful with the utility that you provide with Black Shield, the Dark Binding, and the Soul Shackles. But then, as well, the, your clear speed is far faster, or far more faster than, than Xin Zhao. Xin Zhao, not necessarily known for his clear speed, but he is known for his dueling and his ganking strength. And with the improved W, being able to mark targets from afar that allow you to now charge... All the way. It, it, it's almost like a Lee Sin Q. Yeah. Very, very potent with the dash speed and, and range. Ooh, okay. Speaking of dash champions, the Gwen has just been locked into this game. This is the oh, newest addition baby. to the Summoner's Rift cast of champions. And I, for one, am a very big fan of the Gwen. I have Me too. seen it really, really take over games and completely stop them. I've also seen it do not so well. If you're a fan of the Proving Grounds space, you may have noticed uh, Gamsu playing Gwen yesterday, I believe. Not go super well. It was counterfeit by the Singed. But this game, it will likely be up against that Gnar, which is a ranged champion. The invulnerability zone can be really beneficial against a champion like that. I will say that we did see an unfortunate matchup, but in other games where Gamsu pulled out the Gwen, he popped off. So That's very true. And, and Gwen is, in the right matchup, a such a hard champion to actually manage and control, because you're dealing constant true damage, and you have so much healing built into your kit, especially if you also are running Conquer as well in your setup. This is... This is just one of those champions where it's still early on, and if you haven't played enough against it, whether in solo queue or normals, if you haven't put the games in it on yourself, you have no idea what this champion is doing. And then they drop the, they drop the 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 budget Zinzao ultimate, and, and in some <laughs> cases it's kind of better as well. So yeah. this is Gwen is untar or not untargetable, but you can't can't hurt her if you're outside of the field as well. So it's just she's yeah. untargetable too. It does everything. It does mm -hmm. it all. You can't even be crowd controlled by abilities if you're if the assailant is outside the zone. So man, really strong. Not to mention the ultimate needlework does a tremendous amount of damage and it heals Gwen for so so much because it applies the passive. So this champion is uh, definitely one to watch out for and it pairs really well with oh these two that are being locked in the Sejuani and potentially this Irelia too. Wow, all right, so very aggressive change of pace here for Northview. Yeah, and this is actually really sick because you look at the damage profile from Lambert Longhorns right now, it's all physical. Obviously, they can lock in someone that is magic damage heavy oh. on Futaba, but against someone like Sejuani, you are going to have so much fun stacking health and armor this game. Jin will never kill this Sejuani past two items. It's... Like, True. I mean, 
Marksmen's already have a, a tough time dealing with tanks when they don't have Lord Dominic's regards, but Jin is not known for his tank busting no. <laughs> prowess. Smacks. He, he, he'll no, do fine not. against uh, he'll do fine against the the squishies, but being able to swap that Morgana into the support role, pulling out the Sejuani, and you know what they do on top of it as well, Smacks. They are playing to the fact that their solo laners did so well. Sweet is going to empower them further by playing Sejuani when his solo laners are both playing melee champions. So now that permafrost stun that you can stack up with Sejuani is empowered further because the melee users can stack up those stacks from Sejuani as soon as she's in range. It's, I, I, I'm losing my words here because I'm actually geeking out about how yeah. uh, how cool the synergy is going to be. This is the style of composition that I really enjoy uh, putting together myself because Sejuani is just such a cool tool to use um, when you pair it up with these melee champions in the side lane because it enables Gwen to actually have access to a tremendous amount of crowd control, which otherwise she doesn't have outside of a couple of slows. So when you're up against a champion like Nar, who can be a little tricky to chase down, sometimes when it's in Mega Nar as well, it's a little tricky to actually burst through to the ground also. Sichuan is so beneficial in a matchup like that. And on a blue side too, you have a much easier time diving that lane on top of it all. So in this game, I'm really looking for the Derpy Legend to have a high impact in this one yet again. Looked really good on the Riven in game one. Got that solo kill in the lane. Had a lot of high impact team fights later on. Gwen can sort of play out the same way. You still have a lot of power in that lane, but the team fights can sometimes be a little bit more tricky. The benefit though is that this Sejuani is much more about supporting the solo lanes rather than the rumble of the previous game. So this is a really exciting composition that we're seeing. Not to mention the the Varus as well, which can go into multiple different lanes too. So this is a very flexible composition that can go a lot of different ways. Expect early game power. And it's not like the damage profile for Northview Varsity is all physical either because Gwen is going to be putting out not only a ton of magic damage, but also true damage spilled from their kit as well. I think the other thing that is cool to kind of look back on how this draft evolved is you open up with the Morgana. And the Morgana, even though we're now in a patch where catch-up XP has been in introduced and you can have the likes of junglers like Xin Zhao and Lee Sin and, and Elise coming back into the fray who are focused more on ganking than farming, you know, the Morgana still presents kind of a... a, a a caveat where you can't just pick any gankling jungler they have to be extremely powerful and extremely uh, have a lot of agency right off the bat to then make a trade-off but then because piketa throws down the gauntlet saying okay well if you're gonna go for farming then i'm gonna go for for early agency and tempo goes with the Xin Zhao. But now that Xin Zhao has been thrown into the equation, then it opens up the field for other junglers like Sejuani or other tank junglers because they're the ones that can only exist in a meta where they aren't getting outpaced by faster farming junglers. And so it's it's kind of, it's really cool just to kind of see how the evolution of draft pays out. And I hope this is something that we also see in other tournaments and the ones that we're involved in a lot, Max, with Proving Grounds and semi-professional environment and even Academy to an extent as well. Uh, hopefully, you know, like, not to say that, you know, Morgana and Rumble isn't cool in the jungle, but we don't want it just to become the trifecta of junglers all over again. We we yeah. love seeing diversity and we love seeing evolution of strategies in, in pro play. Yeah, and I mean, we're, we're definitely seeing some creativity in this game. Gwen is a very unexplored champion in the 5v5 competitive space. So is the recent Xin Zhao as well, and it's a little bit more a little bit more practiced than the Gwen, I would imagine, but it is still relatively fresh in people's minds. So I think we have some pretty interesting stuff going on in this game number two. And speaking of game number two, this is a best of three. So Northview with their new uh, full melee top side, the Morgana flexing to the support position, composition that they've shown to us. This is them on their last leg. They do need to win this game and then the next one as well if they want to keep up and win the Georgia finals, Rafa. So this is uh, this is them at their, at their best, you would ho have to assume, and you'd have to hope too, because 
If they're going to get to that game three, they got to win this one. Starts off with one win. Northview Varsity, we know how close they were to clutching out game one. They were able to make it all the way to Mountain Soul. It just, just took a couple of Baron fights in Longhorn's favor. And once again, the Rainbow Squad has hit the rift. They're all going to go for it. A very aggressive level one. Peacatter is going to get spotted out by Arnie, though. Throws a ward down. Not going to be... Oh, my God. They got it. That's a nice little bit of experience in the mid lane. I believe that means Futaba does hit level two on the first wave. So that can be pretty cool. Oh, wait. Okay, look at this, Rafa. It appears that Derpy Legend is going to be playing mid lane while Bento Dox tends his Irelia to the top. Lane as oh. a response to Gnar. That's a really good counter pick matchup. Even though Bento Dox probably being the more experienced Aurelia player, the, their flexibility and taking the better lane matchup. Giving Northview Varsity that extra that extra advantage and ensuring that despite not having similar champion pools, that you can just flex it around and get the better lane matchup. We'll have to see how well they're able to still keep the communication and the way that they want to play the lanes out because the real differences in mid lane and top lane is where you can freeze the lane safely and appropriately and extend huge advantages. Bento Dox, I, I, I wouldn't put it past him to that he's played top lane enough times to be able to understand those. Yeah, if you're an Aurelia player, you have definitely experienced what it's like to be in that lane. Eventually, later on, you will be side laning on this champion either way. So, or Bento Dox, we're definitely expecting that he's he's got that experience under his belt. But we're really going to be seeing where Sweet goes in this game. Because starting up on this bot side of the map does mean that the top side is likely where you will end up after you're clear. And that's exactly where the power point is for this early game, Rafa. For these guys on that side, have this Gwen, they have this Irelia who really do want the support of Sejuani later on. So, North, you can get that ball rolling early, then the side lane becomes so much easier for them as the game goes on. Saw full clear coming out from Sweet on the bottom side of the map is level 3, whereas Piketter going for the... Went for a full clear of their own. Now hitting the red buff and kiting their way towards the top side of the map. We know that the top lane should be the first. Oh. But wait a minute, Derpy Legend. I didn't think they would go for it, but the Flash comes out and first blood has been secured for Northview Varsity. Flash snip snip. As it turns out, deals a bunch of damage in this lane. We saw that Futaba was already taken down ridiculously low. No time to exhaust, no time to flash gets taken out so so quick derpy legend with the 1v1 outplay really nicely done and check this out peak header wanting to set up for that crab but spotting out sejuani as we take a quick look at this replay once again the q comes up right now and you can you can dash and flash while casting snip snip we get to see that one here and we get to see the return to the top or return to the mid lane with a full blasting wand. So the damage is not going to get any smaller as the game goes on here. All right. We we're seeing that Sweet was ready for a potential counter gank, but instead both of them are going to recall. Wait. Spoke too soon. Well, well Sejuani already backed, but totally Unitado. It's like a lot of damage from Bendel Docks in that exchange. Gotta be careful. The wave is someone in Yudatata's favor, but suffering on HP, so needs to find a time to recall, teleport back. As now, lane. Slightly difficult here. It still is pushing towards Unitato. I, I, he's being, uh, he's trying to wait now for Piketter to come back up. This is what an interesting, oh, Flash wow. comes out. Benodox is gonna be able to get it down. Piketter does pick it up. Actually, the turret shot was uh, the one that finishes off Benadox under tower. Or not, was it the return boomerang? I'm. <laughs> <laughs> well, we might get to watch that one again, but nonetheless, we did see Brent or uh, Bento Dox, excuse me, find the one v two kill in the end. 
He missed it up on the stun, but still just... I rally has so much damage in this lane, so we got to see that one come through. Let's watch this again. Bento docks on Irelia. Both of these solo landers are just looking really nice for Northview. Oh, look at that. He even waited out the... Whoop. It is the return. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, Bento docks having great patience on the, on the trade, even though he was being baited in. Oh! Yeah. Wait! Yep. That is... Can't be crowd controlled. You just walk right through. Man. So, okay. I remember that one play versus finals that we were talking about where you thought that Vladimir would be able to walk through with Sanguine Pool, but yep. it was revealed that he couldn't? But Gwen gets to do it. Man. This champion's nuts. Season 11 champs. Pretty good, as it turns out. The, the Rel, the Gwen, and the Diego so far. I think there's going to be another AD Carry champion, too. So that'll be really cool. Uh-oh. I've been having a lot of fun playing AD Carry, so I hope that's uh, hope that's a fun one. Hiroki having a little difficulty getting back into the lane. But Wait. now Peaketter has shown up. Ferromancy. Barely missing Arnie, but still forcing the flash out. Peaketter dashing through. Audaciously, uh -oh. I might add. Dark Binding is about to be available soon. They're just autoing Peaketter whittling away. Dark Binding comes out, but I think the... I think the fight is over. Meanwhile, Unitado, not in the best spot. He does have his mid lane, but I don't know if Futaba can really help out if he can't get in time. He's cr Help him out. <laughs> <laughs> he's out. He's out. It's fine. He did have to use the Gnar ultimate in the end, but still going to be okay. I believe Derpy Legend, or not, uh, excuse me, uh, Bento Doxus was not in range of the Irelia ultimate, so he's able to get out of this one. Uh, speaking of Bento Dox, though, you can see that. He's playing very aggressive, going for the solo kill and trying to just bully Unitado out of the lane. It's meant that he's actually down quite heavily in terms of minion kills in this one, so the gold isn't quite all there. Well, Benodox does have some time to slow push and stack this wave. Watch where Sweet is coming from the jungle. The ult here. Is this a dive in the making? It's gotta be. Wait, you have the Sichuani ultimate right here. They're gonna be able to get over the wall. This is what I was highlighting in the draft. Huge hop there, though. Oh, 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 okay. Well, dive is no longer happening now. Sweet took taking two turret shots on the entry. Did not wait out the minions coming in for the crash. And Unitado now approaching Mega Nar means the dive is no longer in the cards. Benodox does manage to get that push in through. Steel-plated caps will be completed. So now, not only between the Vamp Scepter, but also the steel-plated caps. You know, as as Smax would say, ladies and gentlemen, uh, once uh, Aurelia's complete Vamp Scepter, they are at full build. Yeah. <laughs> you, you no longer really want to fight that champion uh, anymore. The extra 10% lifesteal and the attack damage to... The boots are just icing on top of the Aurelia cake. And uh, you know what? It's tasting pretty good, I'd say. Man, you. <laughs> if you didn't laugh, then it wouldn't have been like that. But now that you did, now people are thinking it. I didn't mean it that way, okay? Lambert Longhorns trying to do their best to uh, keep in this game. And thanks to the efforts of Peak Header and the bottom lane in Via Simp and Hiragi. Been able to pick up the first dragon of the game. So, so far, the dragon stacking is in their favor. Bento Dox. Trying to fight Unitado, but he's about to go Mega, and he has... He's level 8. He's actually a level above Venodox, so the base stats are in his favor, despite being at quote-unquote full build. Derby Legend, though, potentially going for another solo kill, but Piketter has arrived to the party, and they have Hiragi in oh. the wings. Derby Legend going to try to turn it around. He does! Will go down, but much like Game 1, Derby Legend, even in 1v3 situations, still managing to take down one before his death. Wow, yeah, the flash forward there too. Through exhaust, still just so much damage on Gwen. Getting to see that one here as it was a really good roam, I might add, uh, from the side of the Longhorns. We get to see this one in action. Derpy Legend gets to step back, so he casts W and walks through the Vagar cage. You can see that Derpy Legend has practiced this champion a lot. I really like it. Uh-oh, curtain call. Arnie trying to bob and weave out of this one. 
think Arnie's just going to try to give their life over. He knows there's no way out. <laughs> Trying to deny as much assist gold, but he Ketter picks up his second kill of the game. Oh. Going for the... Oh, oh no. Benodox loses this one now. Totally is yeah. about to go mega. Flashing away, but he's got the hop. Got the leaves. Benodox tr trying to dash his way out of this one. Needs to be able to dodge out the Nar ulti, but... Alas. It is all for naught. Totally Unitado giving him the thumbs up. Winning the 1v1 in the Nar versus Irelia matchup is something that is not easy to accomplish, but Unitado is making it work up here. You can see that he's got the gold lead as well, even before then. We're going to watch the bot lane play. The AD carry is just, you know, just ulting each other. It's just, uh, just something that AD carries do. Oh! I didn't even realize that VS Simp was that low on health. And oh! Wow, the... so close. What a clutch heal! The clutch heal not only also giving him the health back, but it was the movement speed boost, being able to dash out on the arrow. Oh, but this time... This time Arnie has a friend. Oh! Chain of Corruption barely goes wide via Sim flashing out in the nick of time. Rocket coming through with the Pharomancy. Now providing relief and... F oh, Futaba. He's running. He's got the speed. He doesn't have flash. He doesn't have summoners, but the engage from Hiragi is going to set up for the cage. Wow. And there is the Primordial Burst. Arnie, still alive though. Derpy Legend forcing back with the teleport. Uh-oh. P. Ketter has arrived to the party. Now it's a one on three. Derpy Legend, can you buy enough time? I don't think so. And the play ends up in the Longhorn's favor. Even though Via Simp was under so much fire earlier, he actually does end up dying in the end, but his flash in response to the Chain of Corruptions was really nice, and it made sure that the play continued stalling out. Meanwhile, top lane, though, the <laughs> remember I was saying that AD carries ulting each other is just, just AD carry things? That's also yeah. just top lane things, you know? Yeah, just throwing out the ultimates, uh, especially when you're like Meganar. You just want to mm. get some get some chip damage down to force him out of lane. I'm watching this again. Yeah, the teleport through here for Derpy Legend is really the, the biggest response. We can see that Futaba was on the roam well in advance. Just huge team play comes through from the Longhorns. They get to pick up this play. You can see in the picture and picture down there, they get to the dragon on top of it all. I believe that is their second Drake of the game. So again, the Drake stack is in favor of the red team, but teams have swapped. Longhorns are the ones who are trying to get that scaling advantage online and they will need it. Looking at that Zin Zhao, I remember when we were trying to make AP Zin Zhao work when he <laughs> got like just an obnoxious amount of ability power ratios added to his his ultimate. We succeeded, but uh, we don't have the proof. Unfortunately not. It was, <laughs> I honestly, I think it's a good thing that AP Zin Zhao never took off because that was, that was a cursed build and it was a cursed tech that no one should ever nice have flash. to deal with. Good stuff from Unitado. That would have definitely been a dead nar. The slow from the Vanguard's Edge would have set up for a beautiful Kalatial Prison, as well as a reset from Ben Odox. Now, Fudetaba, gonna get some friends. Oh Two friends. It's three on one, Derby Legend dashing over the wall though. Should be able to buy some time. Wind becomes Lightning Lands, but not enough time for Audacious Charge to come back up to dash in, but beautiful cage from Fudetaba and good night, Derby Legend. Nowhere to go. He was what? just not what? quite as swift as a coursing river. And Unitado just out, killed him. <laughs> yeah, Bento Bento Docks isn't either. Uh, <laughs> both of the both the solo laners getting dropped just across the map. Sweet might have some response, but it's a two level wait, difference right wait, now. But there's friends along the way. You got to get out of oh, there. Oh boy! <laughs> Run, sweet. <laughs> All right. I, I don't think they're gonna go and dive a Sejuani. I wouldn't personally to watch the top side play all right oh watch just so just top and docks gonna... each other oh yeah. but he's a level down oh man also doesn't respect yeah oh, oh. <laughs> the, Jeff with the BM. <laughs> Oof. that's gotta hurt that's gotta hurt oh my god you know we were hyping up ben odox especially off of their play on the silas in game one and you know, being able to pick up the solo kill early on on the Aurelia, we know that Benodox can do it, but man, 
I think Jeff, the president of the Peaketter fan club, said, But why aren't you talking about me, though? Let me show you <laughs> what a real top laner could do. And now he's two levels above Benodox, preventing. He's the one in control of the lane. He's the one that is denying XP and gold away from Benodox, and he can't walk up as bottom lane. Potentially going to gauge Chain of Corruption, stops via Simp in his tracks, gets oh. a little bit of burst damage off of the returning Pierce Arrow. P. Ketter here for the gank, just making sure that they can kill the Rift Herald, and the Swede is also here in case for a counter gank. Oh, via Simp goes in with the Gale Force, sets up for a Dark Bind from. But it's not going to be enough. Applesaurus Rex already going down. Curtain Call answering from far, getting a quite a bit of damage down. Not enough to take down Swede or Arnie anytime soon as Hiragi. Sub 200 HP. We'll have to recall after that one. The sub support does end up falling there for Northview. Applesaurus Rex, which is probably the best name in this game, fortunately does go down. The members of the Longhorns are just so strong at this stage of the game. You can see all their mythics are completed for the carry members. But to watch this replay yet again, the Rift Herald was going to time out. So that is why it is in this lane. I want to highlight what Via Simp actually does in this one, though. Just because usually, as Jin, your your fourth shot and your Gale Force are used to assassinate people, but this time it's actually used just to set up the bind. You can go forward right there. Applesaurus Rex tries to make it a return play, but it ended up that Via Simp was just setting up for the rest of his team to find that kill. Really nice awareness from this utility-based marksman champion. A lot of the times, people don't remember or don't think about how Jin has, as Smacks would call, one of the best abilities in the game in Deadly Flourish. Oh, yeah. Totally Unitado though. And one of you, okay, nice flash from Beto Docs. Unitado saying, okay, it is time to dip. He knows that Sweet is over the wall. Glacial Prison is not quite available yet. Meanwhile, another mid lane fight. Applesaurus Rex oh. getting caught out, flashing over the cage. Stopwatch, only going to just delay the inevitable. Unitado actually made it out alive. Unitado living is a really big deal that can continue this play. Deadly Flourish not quite in range, Rafa. Peaketter flashing forward, but they got to get into the... What? Peaketter oh. actually does so much damage. He gets taken down by Benodox, but I think that's a worthy trade for the members of Lambert Longhorns. They've taken down both the solo laners. Wow. All right. So these plays are still going in favor of the Longhorns. Arnie now arrived. Chain of Corruption here. I don't believe that's under the oh. turret. He might have just killed himself. Oh, no. my God. By Garjin, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. The zone control from afar is gigantic from these two champions. We get to see this one really just go all around the rift with this play. Shinoa starts this one off, and you can see Applesaurus Rex pressing all the buttons. Please, let me live! But no, can't quite do it. Do you get to see that one does play out with his demise? And Unitado was getting run down by three members all the while, but they quickly realized that this Gnar is too far ahead. He's too tanky. He can't be taken down even with all this extra damage. He lives with just about 200 HP. And then to top it all off, we see in the end Arnie trying to save the turret. But Bagar Cage and the Jin Root and everything on top of it all is just too much to handle, and they do end up with that dragon off the back of that marvelous team play. You know, one of the cool things about this Vigar Jin setup is this is a this was a common setup. I, I don't remember the team that used it in 2015 Worlds, but they were one of the teams that started bringing out Vigar mid lane. And then pairing, and, and Jin was, all, between Jin and I think Ash were like the premier 80 carries because it was a utility marksman meta and all the damage was coming from the top side of the map because that was the Juggernaut meta with with mm -hmm. Darius, with Fiora, with, uh, we even had Mordekaiser bot lane and Gangplank top as well. Yeah. There's Rengar, I believe too, right? That was one of the the big champions at that time. I think I think I think, think Rainover was the big Rengar player in the jungle, but he yeah. he was he was weird because he he ran like <laughs> Cinder Hulk, Cinder Hulk, Spear Visage, Rengar, full tank. I mean, like and... it does it made its job work, but uh, yeah, it's it's not the fun full damage rank. Smacks, I'm sad. You no. know the team no, that you, you just don't. We don't have to talk about it. It was okay. Cloud Nine, no. that did, uh, Incarnation, AK Jensen on 
and, no. and we talked about Cloud9 again. And you know what Team Rainover's on right now? It's Cloud9. Nine. <laughs> <laughs> How do we always no. end up talking about Cloud9, man? Oh. oh, I'm slumped back in my chair now. <laughs> Derpy Legend taking a lot of harass from Rio Futaba right now. And Unitata still two levels above. He's going to take his chances. Might just slam him against the wall. Oh, no. Oh. Turn shots. Turn shot, not enough, but... The Aurelia Nar matchup, when it's going in Nar's favor, this is, uh, things are looking very, very concerning for Northview Varsity. Unitato's solo kills have resuscitated me. I am now completely okay. I'm no longer slumped back in my chair. I'm not thinking about MSI. To oh, no, no, I'm thinking about, I'm just kidding. Totally Unitato has played this series so, so well, and just like you were talking about, Rafa, We've, we've been hyping up Bento Docs. We've been hyping up the Derpy Legend, but he's really shut us up with these NAR games back to back. This has been a phenomenal performance in the lane and outside of it. And now we get to see him go down to this bot side of the map, trying to potentially set up for that fourth dragon in a row. Let's watch this one again. Yeah, dodging out on the flawless duet as well, which doesn't give Bento Docs any opportunities to be able to punish Unitato under the tower. Got that stuff. stride breaker to get out too. Mm -hmm. Really nice. And then Rift Herald on top of it all, taking the turret. Now he's gonna be a menace bot lane. Now it's Derpy Legends problem. You get to see Bento Docs be like, alright, have fun. I I sure am not. He is killing me over <laughs> and over. <laughs> it's like, okay, I can't fight the Gnar. Yeah. Derpy Legend, it's your turn. Please. At least he's only two levels down. Bento is three, so Unitato is just taking over the rift. Yeah, he's the highest level on the he's the highest level champ in the game right now. 15. Ooh. But a teleport is coming in. So Benadoc saying, okay, I can't fight a 1v1, but you know what? What about a 2v1? Unitano flashing over the flawless duet, throwing out the Meganar. Pushing them back. They got a flash out of it for a teleport. Uh oh, smacks. Bento Docs doesn't they don't, have TP. Stuck in the bottom lane. They don't burn this fast, though. This, this is a gen, remember? Ooh. Oh, but it, it wasn't about the burn. It was about the bait. And they have fled them right into their trap. Applesaurus Rex and Arnie are now dead. And sweet. Can they make the heroic Baron steal that they need Wait, look at this. to be able to come back in this game? Unitato actually losing out Wait. to Derpy Legend. Derpy Legend with a shutdown. Northview Varsity are not going to be going down anytime soon. Sweet now being routed over the wall. They're delaying yeah. the Baron as this is going to take quite a while. 5,000 health. Oh. Docs trying to buy as much time as he can, but wait, dashed right into the Vigar cage. And Sweet, still alive. Shinoa is just being a nuisance at this point. I, I, I think they should just deal with this Sejuani first. There you go, <laughs> Pketter. Just realizing, hey guys, you know what? Wait we take the Baron slow enough. <laughs> He's going to die to Baron. All right, no, it's okay. Oh God. Via Sim. Okay. There it is. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you know... It, it wasn't it wasn't the cleanest play, but it was the most effective play. In the end, we do get to see the Longhorns pick up that Baron. Derpy Legend now on the run, no mana. Not a ward Infernal now. Infernal Soul also on the table here, Smacks. Well, they even got a reset off, so this is going to be a really powerful set of champions for the Longhorns going to be taking that one. As we get to watch the Baron fight again. Look at this engage from Shinoa. This is the kind of play that makes Rel seem like the most broken champion in the game right there. I mean, for a while, you proudly claimed that she was. Yep. They haven't nerfed her that much, so I'm pretty sure she's still really good. It's plays like that that make me reassure of that one. I heard her shut shutdown, though. It's nice. Yeah. Uh, that does allow them to complete the Rift Maker. Not quite. <laughs> Can you play by play the next fight that we have? I, I need a moment. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see if it starts up right now. Derpy Legend does have Black Shield. He can get out of this. All right, Sweet is in position. We've got. <laughs> 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 okay. Man. Sweet I don't know why it was so funny cage. for me. <laughs> totally Unitato is taking out the bot lane turn. I'm with fine the now. Wave. Uh, are you? 
<laughs> I'm not convinced. Okay, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. Okay. Ryufutaba, setting up for this siege. Burning Sweet's health, health bar down as the minions are now starting to corral into this bottom inhibitor turret. Via Simp, wailing away on the mid. Oh. <laughs> did, Jesus. You just, did you just fall into a fish tank? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, my God, I mean, I, I should have known. I should have known that the Primordial Burst would pack a wall up at this point in the game, but man, it still, it still hits different when a 24 Magi Soul Sealer stack Vigar just Q ultis you and deletes you from the game <laughs> and the cage being thrown down. The Event Horizon will be the event that leads the Lambord Longhorns into victory. And just like that, Smax, already the disconnects are coming out. They know what is about to happen. The last stand will come out from the Derpy Legend. He was able to win a 1v1 against Unitato, but it's not going to be enough against all five members of the Lambert High School, aka the P Kenner Fan Club, defending their championship title in the Play vs. Spring 2021 Georgia Finals. And what happens to the Longhorn when they go down early? They come back stronger in game number one. What happens when they get the lead in the beginning? They win 11 minutes faster than game one, Rafa. That's just such a clean 2-0. And we get to watch this primordial burst again. Oh, no. Oh, Arnie. I'm so sorry that just happened to you. Man. Once Arnie was deleted, it was all easy pickings for the rest of the Longhorns to rally up the minions and... Just, just close out the games, Max. Yeah. I, I don't know what else there's, to say. There's another Vega ult here as well. I don't know if you noticed this, but he gets oh, Vega really? ulted twice. Look at it. No, <laughs> man! <laughs> uh, no! <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> You got to feel for Arnie there. It's like, all right, guys, I'm back up. Maybe I can defend. You got to be kidding me. There's no way he has ulti up again. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, Arnie. Oh. Well, you know, all, all of us over here at the Play Versus, and I'm sure all of George is feeling for you, but we do have to congratulate the Longhorns for taking the 2-0 in the finals, defending their title. Huge congratulations to all you guys over there. That was Quite a performance that you showed us in both of those two games. Really big fans of you guys. I uh, I absolutely I absolutely loved it. Absolutely, got a shout out P Ketter one more time, being the the leader of the P Ketter fan club along with Toli Unitado via Sim, Rio Futaba, and then of course Hiragi. Shinoa Haragi. That's such a the, these are such cool names, by the way. I, I have to, you know, I, I didn't really let them sink in, but man, congratulations to you all today. Well played, well deserved. Congratulations on defending your title. And for the rest of the audience at home, we will see you, I believe, tomorrow for our next play versus finals. So have a great rest of your day and see you then.